Hello and welcome to video number three of the 10 videos that I'm going to upload today. It's seven days to the exam, B1, uh, that's the biology paper one exam. And remember, this is the point where you keep keeping more positive. I know the closer you are to the exam, there's this tendency, I, I keep saying it, but it's the, it's the fact, but you know what, I actually am very confident that my revision videos and the uh, positive words I've been sending out have actually been helping lots of people, so that's why I just say, you know what, this is a third video, I didn't actually do it in the first two, I just want to remind you, keep keeping positive and keep keeping your spirits high, and I'm going to do this the, the third video of a series of 10 that I'm going to do. So a total of 100 questions that I've put together. Now, this is going to be slightly longer. I, I am thinking it might be, but I don't know. Let's see. Because for number question 22, I'm going to do a bit more detailed explanation. I want to do tw questions 21 to 30 of the 100 uh, B1 questions. I actually wrote 1,000 questions. Not yet. Not quite. <laughs> 100 of them. All right. What is active transport? Active transport is when energy is used to move particles across a membrane. Now, when you have a situation where you have concentration gradient, like I explained in diffusion and osmosis in the earlier videos, now that's a natural way to move particles. But what when you have particles, where you have to move, move particles from where you have less to where you have a lot? So that is against the concentration gradient. Now, energy is applied to move those particles across. And which situations we would find that? In the soil, that's how mineral ions are moved from the soil into the root. Because inside the root, you have more mineral ions, but you still need to move them from the soil into the plant. The plant tell anyway, so energy is used to move these particles across. Also, when food is finally digested in the small um, intestine where absorption is meant to take place, if, for instance, you had more of the particles in the blood around compared with the um, small intestine or if the particles were naturally too large to fit across, energy will be needed to push this across the um, concentration gradient and across a membrane that they will not uh, naturally be able to cross. So that is active transport. Question 22 is talking about the adaptation of um, exchange surfaces. So I've said alveoli. Now, at the end of the lungs, you have alveoli because the, um, um, sorry, the, tra uh, the trachea that goes into the lungs. Now, the trachea divides into br one bronchus, another bronchus, they're called bronchi, and they further break, uh, branch into bronchioles. And at the end of bronchioles, you have this sac like uh, structures which um you know they look like a bunch of grapes that's how we explain it to students sometimes they look as like a bunch of grapes and those um are called avioli one is aviolus now the walls have very specific structure uh, they're shaped in a very specific way they're adapted to ensure effective gas exchange and it's similar to all gas exchange surfaces therefore avioli their walls are one cell thick so they are very thin, which means uh, the distance that diffusion has to have, uh, have needs to travel, uh, particles need to diffuse across is not very far at all. The distance is quite short, so the, the uh, substances diffuse across very quickly. They are surrounded by capillaries. Now, blood uh, capillaries are quite thin as well. They carry huge um, volume of blood around uh, the they make make a huge uh, amount of volume of blood available around the um, alveoli so that there is a quick and a, uh, there's a quick trans uh, diffusion of part of um gases for example the blood that's carrying carbon dioxide is very rich in carbon dioxide and there is less of carbon dioxide in the alveoli so because of that there is a quick diffusion of carbon dioxide into the alveoli so it can travel out to be expelled so also um, oxygen that's heavy in the alveoli diffuses out as well and then it's coiled up to increase the surface area because they're coiled up tightly into this little uh, sa air sacs which we call the alveoli they then create a large surface area because if you were to collect all of them and spread them out even though they fit into a tiny space they are actually very very big so that means they create a surface area volume to volume ratio that's efficient for this sort of diffusion 
It's also the same thing in gills. The filaments and the laminae, they have the same effect. <clears throat> so more gas particles diffuse from the water into the blood of the fish. Same for leaves in plants. Leaves also have um, thin, thin surface, they're, they're thin, just the same way you have one cell thick walls in avioli. The, they're, they're very, very flat, they're very thin, and they also have large supply of chloroplast with chlorophyll, which absorbs sunlight for photosynthesis, and a network of veins that support the leaves for it to be able to carry out transportation and um, efficient gas exchange. And then you have stomata. Stomata are the pores that you find on the surface of the leaf. They open and close for transpiration. Transpiration being, being evaporation of water out of the leaf. Just like sweating on the human skin enables you to cool down because it actually takes some of the heat out as the, water, as the sweat evaporates. Transpiration in similar way would also cool down the plant. And because when the stomata open, it also allows carbon dioxide to diffuse in for photosynthesis and uh, oxygen diffuses in as well for respiration. Now, diffusion happens in leaves, lungs, osmosis. Um, okay, diffusion, is the, this question is about where does diffusion happen? I think I've already explained it, but just to capture it, it happens in leaves, in lungs, and an osmosis happens when water is taken up by roots. This question is about why are they important? Without diffusion and osmosis, water and food will not be transported around the organism. For example, photosynthesis happens in the leaf, in the leaves of a plant, so you only have the food there if there was no efficient transport system. So that transport system enables uh, translocation, which is the movement of food around the plant to happen and water from the roots to get to all the parts of the plant. So diffusion and osmosis are very important to transport materials around uh, and nutrients around the organism and also to remove waste materials. Waste materials are removed as a reason of diffusion and osmosis. Now it says for the digestive system, this is quite small, so I'm hoping that you can clearly see it. So uh, it's a quick overview of the digestive system and what happens there. In the mouth, there is chewing with the teeth and mixing with saliva. That's very important because that, that's the process of mastication. Um, very important because amylase is in the saliva and the digestion of starch or carbohydrates starts, uh, begins in the mouth because amylase is the enzyme that breaks down starch. And then in the esophagus or the gullet, some people also call it the food pipe, there is swallowing. Um, peristalsis is a rhythmic motion that a rhythm like movement that's created when the ring like um, uh, uh, muscle, uh, the ring like structures that line up the um, esophagus close and open, close and open. So the one on top will shut, close shut, and the one below it will open, creating a movement that squeezes the food along when you swallow. You have the stomach. There is chemical breakdown of food in the stomach by the hydrochloric acid and the enzyme, specifically the protease, breaks down proteins into amino acids. There is also mechanical breakdown by the muscular contractions of the stomach. Also, the stomach is a storage. It stores the food for a few hours, but between three and four, for it to be broken down and then for further digestion to happen. The small intestine, very in in interesting. In the small intestine, you have finger-like projections called the villi, or one is villus. It also creates a large surface area for digestion and absorption to happen. Now, digestion happens by amylase, that's carbohydrates to um, amino, um, carbo carbohydrate or starch is broken into glucose. Protease, proteins are broken into amino acids, and that by protease, which is the enzyme, and lipase breaks down um, fats and oils into fatty acids and glycerol. Very importantly, absorption happens here. Lastly is the large intestine. I just said L dot intestine. In the large intestine, there isn't actually digestion, but rather what happens here is when the body needs to absorb more water, if there was less water in the blood, the brain would, um, allow, well, would control the large intestine. So there will be reabsorption of water from the waste that's now being compacted. So it's compacted and it's pushed 
to the outside as waste or feces. All right, question number 26. Uh, what are enzymes? Enzymes are biological catalysts. They break down food quickly in digestion. Quickly. They speed up the rate at which food is broken down and ensure food is probably properly broken down. Now, this is part of question 30. I might as well, I'll come back to it in a minute. Question 27. Say, what does denature mean? It means the active site of an enzyme has become deformed, not destroyed, not dead. They become deformed. And when the active site is deformed, it means they cannot fit onto the substrate perfectly anymore so the enzyme will no longer be able to carry out the the function remember enzymes are reaction specific that is the enzyme that break down carbohydrates only break down carbohydrates they will not break down protein they are reaction specific what is optimum temperature optimum temperature is the temperature that the enzyme works best at um, most enzymes in the body work best around about 37 degrees Celsius because that's the natural body te um, average temperature. But when it starts getting to 40 or above, it becomes denatured. I wanted to show you the active site using it to explain the lock and key principle. It just says that the substrate starch that needs to be broken down, for example, fits into the active site snugly like um, a key into a lock or like a jigsaw puzzle now if that happens i just use that to explain it if that happens and they fit together like a lock and a key then you'll be able to break it down so if this is starch it would have broken it into glucose so that's why i said one two and then three where they're completely broken down question 30 was we should to list the different um, um enzymes and what they break down so amylase breaks down carbohydrates and they break them into glucose or starch into glucose and then protease notice they always have the A's, A's with them protease is an enzyme that breaks down proteins into amino acids and lastly you have lipase they break down fats and oils into fatty acids and glycerol by the way all three enzymes are found in the small intestine amylase is found in the mouth that's where digestion of carbohydrates starts there is inside saliva and protease is present in the stomach i hope that has been very helpful now this is the third of 10 videos i am going to upload all of them today because i've completed the questions all i'm doing is just uploading them so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take a two to three hour break I'm gonna take my children and their friend out who's visiting with them for the long weekend and then round about maybe 8 ish pm i'll upload the other videos but i promise you i'll definitely upload all 10 videos today because i have all the questions already if you have any questions ask me and please share to your friends we only have seven days now please share share and share this so people can see it to just help them to finalize their revision for this gcsd i can't wait for the result and the outcome we're gonna get because it's gonna be amazing i know you can do it Keep keeping positive and God bless you.